Uh, welcome once again. It's quite a long time. I want to welcome you back again. This is uh, Fountain of Life Ministries International at the Gambia with Pastor Paul. Once again, welcome to this uh, uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's beautiful. The weather is okay. I just want to thank God for His for His faithfulness. Uh, I just want to share with us briefly of God who will fight for you and God who has called you and God who has heard your cry. You may think that nobody is hearing you, but I want to reassure you that you have somebody uh, who will take care of you. Uh, before that, I want us to pray. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your word. I just want to bless you for been there for us. I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you so much that you never fail. You never fail. You never fail. We want to worship you, Lord. We say thank you so, for so much, O oh Lord, that your faithfulness endured forever. In Jesus' name. Uh, if you are uh, with me, turn with me to Exodus chapter 17 um, from verse number 8. I'm reading from the translation. Then after I'm going to read from the original language, that's the Hebrew language. And then we'll see how far God will take us to with uh, these uh, uh, clips. Um, the Bible says in verse number 8, And it come to pass, then, sorry, verse number 8, Then came the Amalekai and fought against the Israelites in Raphadim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out and choose us out men and go and fight the Amalekai tomorrow I will stand up the top of the mount the hill with the rod of God in my hands and Joshua did as Moses had said unto him and he fought with the Amalekai and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the mountain, and it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, the Israelites prevailed. And when his hand was down, the Amalekites prevailed. But Moses' hands were some heavy, and they, have, they took the stone and put it under him and he sat upon upon thereupon and Aaron and who stayed up his hands and one one on the one side and another on the other side and his hands were steady until the getting of the getting down of the sun and Joshua discomfited the Amalekai and his people with the age of sword and the Lord said unto Moses unto Moses write this for the memorial in a book and rehearse it in the eye uh, in the ears of Joshua for I will utterly uh, I will utterly put out of the remembrance of Amalekite from under the heaven. And then Moses built an altar and called the place Jehovah Nisi. For he has said, because the Lord has sworn, that the Lord will have war with Amalekite, from generation to generation. We all know the Amalekai hate Israel. The Amalekai are the people that do not want Israel to go through of what God wanted them to be. The Bible says they make war. And they came and they make war. The Amalekai, as I used to say, they, will know they don't need to wait for you to trouble them. The mere fact that God is prospering you, it is enough for them to attack. The Amalekite could be any person that hates the progress 
or the plan of God for your life. The Bible says, when they came and fought against Israel, Moses said unto Joshua, tomorrow, choose among us men that can fight. I will go to the top of the mountain and talk to the Lord. The Bible says, and the following day, Moses went to the top of the mountain and he prayed and he stayed there. He lifted up the rod of the Lord. The Bible says, any time that Moses lift up the rod of the Lord, the children of Israel prevail. And when he bring it down, the Amalekite prevailed. That reminds me of the, 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 the intercessory part of that war. If you want your pastor, you want your father, you want your, 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 your spiritual father, whosoever is your leader, you want, to, you want them to do the battle and win the battle for the nation, for the family, for the church, you need to be a person that will stay on and cry unto the Lord on behalf of that minister. Some people think that pastors don't need prayer, but I cannot tell you that we need prayer, we need prayer. Bible says, when, or when Moses' hand was heavy, the only thing, those people, the, the eight, the intercessors, they come together. They lift up the hands of Moses. Bible says, one was on the other hand, the other one was on the other hand. They lift his hand. He was steady till the, in the evening. And Joshua discomfit the Amalekite. Your leader who is praying, who is preaching, who is, I mean, who is teaching you every day in and out. He needs people that will support him both spiritually and physically. Spiritually, they can stand with him in prayer. In the nation, we can stand with our leaders in prayer. In our churches, we can pray for our leaders. We do need whatever we are, even the, fat, in the fathers in the house. Pray for them that God will give them wisdom and they can fight the battle for you and I. Our leaders are vulnerable to every attack because they concentrate on the people that they are leading. But thank God that is Moses. He said, I will pray for you. Man of God, who is that somebody that you release into the ministry? Who is, I mean, somebody that you, 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 he's under you and you send him to do the work for you. Are you praying for the person? He's, Moses said, I will go and talk to the Lord. Most, uh, Joshua, go and do the battle. Choose among men. I am going to commune with God. May the Lord raise people that will pray with us. You send somebody to preach, no, no matter how eloquent he is, he needs a backup spiritually. The Bible says, and they continue to pray, and they continue to do the battle. The Bible says, when, it, when Moses stopped praying, or his hands are down, the Amalekite prevailed. They will come against the children of Israel. But the moment his hands are lifted up, why was he lifting his hand? We will talk about it to the end of this. Clip. Two people. That we need support. The people that were there with Moses may not even pray. The Bible did not record that they, they also prayed. But the only thing they, they did was to lift up the hands of Moses. You can lift the, the hands of your minister, your pastor, your priest, your leader. How do you lift them up? When they, when they need that is physical need that they are going through, you may not know it until you go closer to them. Some pastors don't see the way we dress outside. There are things that we need, and we need people to strengthen us. In, in strengthen our hands, release that thing. Because a pastor who is hungry in the family, I mean, the, in the house, cannot pray and cannot teach you well. Materially, they need support. They did not support him spiritually. They support him physically by raising his hand. How can you raise the hand of your pastor? How can your pastor's hand stay strong and, and lifted up high? When you need, there's a physical need that you you need. You have enough in your house. Why not just bless your, your, your servant, your, your pastor, your spiritual father? He may need money. He may need to buy one or two things. He, don't, he will not come and tell you, Lord, be sensitive to what God is saying. God may drop something in your heart. Don't struggle with it. Go and bless your, 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 your spiritual father, your, your pastor. Oh, no, no, no. He said, pastor need everything. He, don't, he didn't need, he, he had, sorry, pastor didn't have everything. Pastor did not have everything. He needs your prayer. He needs your support physically. He needs he need the strength of encouragement. Why do you, when did you last visit your pastor? Say, pastor, just come to visit you. Even if you don't have anything to, do, to give him, just go and encourage him. Stay with him. Ask him his need. And if you are sure that God is asking you to pray for him, pray for him. Moses stood there. 
And one thing that Moses, Moses, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Joshua was busy with the Lord. He could not hear. He was busy fighting the enemy of God. He could not hear. But there was somebody who was there for him. He could hear from him. He could, he could, he could direct him. And that's why at the end of the day, Moses was asked by God to write those things as a memorial. When he write encounter he had with God up on top of the mountain, he said, you will rehearse it unto the ear of God. Joshua. Joshua may not have time to, to listen to me because he's busy doing the work of God. What you need to do is to rehearse this thing unto him. Repeat what I, you have seen, the, your encounter with me. What was that thing that Moses was going to rehearse? But it doesn't make sense. Right? What, what is it? The Bible, the Bible did not tell us what God told him there. But there was something that Moses discovered. And it was when he built the altar. And he said, he called the name of the altar Jehovah Nisi. And what is Jehovah Nisi? He said, Lord, our banner. Yes, but it's Lord, our standard. God has revealed the strategic spiritual warfare that he taught him and he asked him to teach Joshua. That's why he said, rehearse what you wrote. Rehearse what I ask you to wrote because you have seen me. I have come in with you and how to depend upon me on battle. Your lifting up your hands signifies that you submit the whole Israel unto me. May the Lord cause us to hear him and hear him properly. Weyomar Yahweh El Mose Katav Zeked Zekerun, Basifar, Weshem, Baesni. Okay? Ye Doshua, Ye Yeshua, Ki Mose, Amakal, Eth Sakar, Where Amalakai. Verse number 15 says, Weoma ki iad el kas el ki iad el kes ya mel kama le yawe amalake me dor ador. In fact, the last verse is said here of of, of uh, Aaron. Uh, sorry, um, Exodus chapter seventeen. The last verse said in translation in verse number sixteen. For he has said because. The Lord has sworn in that the Lord will have war with Amalekite from generation to generation. My, my, my Hebrew Bible says, my Tanakh said, Weoma ki ya al yad al kes ya milkama ilayawe medo ador. He said, because you have lifted up your, your hands upon the throne, upon the upon the altar, upon the throne of Yahweh. So, which means that in Moses, by lifting up his hands, he signifies that he is holding onto the throne of Yahweh. And it depends upon him. And it was there that God revealed unto him something that they asked him to write. May the Lord cause your eyes to see in your prayer. He said, he lifted up his hands. And God said, because you have lifted up your hands upon the altar on the throne of God, I will fight your enemy, the Amalekite, from generation to generation. He did not say all generation. It could be that the one generation will, was decided to turn unto him. He will not fight for them. And that's why he said, from me door, door, from generation to generation. Every generation has their punishment. He will deal with them if they continue troubling the children of Israel. The Lord will deal with every generation that lifted up their hands against you, against your family, against your ministry, against the, the what you are doing. The Lord will fight for them until they repent because God has a plan for you and he will, nothing can stop it. These are the people that want to stop the plan of God for the children of Israel. And God said, and they lifted up unto the Lord. No matter what you are going through, learn to hold unto the altar of the Lord. He said, the key for your way your marquee yad el kes ya. He said, because you have lifted up your hands upon the throne, upon the altar of the Lord, you are holding out of Yahweh. Because this short word of Yah is Yahweh. That's the short form. Yahweh made me come Amal be Amalakai generation door or door. He said, because that because of that, Yahweh will fight your enemy 
from generation to generation. Once again, I want to thank you for listening. Bless the name of the Lord for that word. The Lord will cause your enemy to bow because you are great God. You will fight them and you will never let them prevail because you trust in him. Learn to put your trust in him. No matter what you are going through, put your hands on the altar. Remember Moses, God told Moses, uh, Solomon, after finished building the temple, the, the, the temple said, if anyone will have problem and come and hold onto the horns of the altar, I will answer him. Once again, this is Fountain of Life Ministries International Pastor Paul T. Mendy. Happy S Sunday. Um, if you have nowhere to worship, join us on Sunday uh, from 9 to 10, from 9.30 to 11.30 or 11 o'clock every Sunday. I will also have an Hebrew classes, the Biblical Hebrew for that matter. And uh, the Lord will bless you if you call us. So please just find time to support this ministry. We need your help. We need your help, and we need your support. You are not supporting us. You are supporting God, and nobody can walk with God, and God will never bless you. Blessings, Amen.